today. I'm up here in the mountains outside of Steamboat Springs, and my goal tonight is to photograph the Rosette Nebula. So I thought I'd take you guys along today and show you how I'm going to do this whole process. And the first thing I have to do is find a place to set up my star tracker because, as you can probably see, there's a lot of trees, and I need a very specific window so I can actually uh, get the nebula visible. So the first thing I'm going to do is use Slayerm on my phone, figure out where the nebula is coming up. And then once I know that location, I need to, again, find a spot where there's no trees in the way. So that's going to be my first objective now that I'm here on location. So over here is east, but these trees are still going to give me some problems, unfortunately. And I could keep going down on these rocks, but now I'm getting pretty far away from the car, and frankly, I don't want to lug all that gear over these rocks in the middle of the night, so I think I'm going to recon back and maybe try and set up somewhere closer to the road, see if I can't find a clearing somewhere in the eastern sky. Well, after wandering around for about 10 minutes, I think I found the best I can do for this location. So again, the uh, Rosette Nebula should be coming up over here and be around there maybe by 3.30 a.m. So with that in mind, I'm going to have to set up my sky guider here and then do my polar alignment, which brings up another problem. I also have to have a clear view to the north and I need to be able to see the North Star from this location. So I should be able to see the North Star from here, but again, with all these darn trees in the way, any one of these might be blocking the North Star and preventing me from doing a precise polar alignment. And since I'm going to be shooting at 600 millimeters, I definitely have to have a precise polar alignment. So this is definitely where things get kind of tricky. And uh, really all I can do now is wait until twilight. And then at that point, I'll be able to see where the North Star is at. And then I'll be able to double check if this spot is actually going to work. Of course, you can always use an app like Stellarium or Photopill or anything else really and find North if you don't want to wait. And that's actually what I just did because... I figured these trees were going to be in the way, and so after looking at Stellarium, uh, I noticed there was a big bush right next to me that was going to be covering it up anyway. So found another location now. Hopefully this one will uh, give me a clear view directly to the North Star, and also give me a nice view directly to the Rosette Nebula. And uh, hopefully this works, because this is going to be a nice clear night, and uh, I drove all the way up to the top of this mountain. So uh, we'll see what happens. After a bit more searching, uh, I found an even better location. So again, we have uh, east over here, we got north over there. So this is definitely gonna work perfect. The only problem is it's a little bit of a hike and I'll have to move my car to another spot. But as you can see, it's a beautiful location and I think this is gonna be perfect for doing my astrophotography tonight. So. As you can see, it definitely pays to always do some recon during the day if you can, because if you got up here in the middle of the night, I would never would have found this spot, and well, I probably wouldn't have had good results. So anyway, here's a beautiful view to end the day, and uh, I guess I'll catch you guys tonight once I get everything set up, probably at like 3 a.m., but uh, until then, I'm going to enjoy the sunset, and I'll catch you guys later. There's something big over there. I don't know what it is. I saw a coyote up there. Well, this sucks. I don't know if it's a bear or if it's a moose. If it's a moose, this is going to turn very bad very quickly. If it's a bear, I might be all right. You guys probably can't see him, but there's a moose rubbing his horns on the tree. And now he sees me, so I gotta go. I think what I'm gonna do 
is just cut through the field and get away from him. Um, this definitely puts a damper on the night. I don't know if I can come here tonight at three in the morning now. The last thing I need is to run into him in the middle of the night. So, um, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Uh, for right now, my main goal is, oh shit, there's another moose. Which means the male is going to be even more aggressive. This is not going good for me. Um, yeah, I guess this is no go for tonight. And I need to really get the hell out of here before the male gets pissed. If you're wondering why I'm so afraid of moose, uh, go check out Les Stroud's moose story. Um, and that'll give you a pretty good idea of why I'm so freaked out right now. Um, but hopefully, this is gonna suck. This is all waist high. Well, I think I managed to get around him. Um, I still gotta cut through the brush quite a ways to get back to the road and back to the car, but I think we averted the danger for now. So, I guess I'll check in with you guys when I make it back to the car. Alright, I made it back to the car, so I guess everything worked out, but uh, that was definitely more than I bargained for. I had heard something making some noise in the brush when I first went through there, but I kind of figured it was a bear, so I wasn't all that worried, to be honest. Um, but... That sucks. <laughs> I was gonna go, like I said, up over that way tonight. I guess it's actually more up there. The clearing, where we saw the sunset, but now with those two moose there, I did not want to run into them at two in the morning. So, I guess I'll go with plan A, which is my original spot here. It's not gonna be ideal. I don't even know if it's gonna work, but better than getting trampled to death by a moose in the middle of the night. So, I guess for now I'm gonna cook up some dinner and then maybe watch a movie, go to bed, get some sleep before I have to get up and start shooting. Now it's 3.30 in the morning and this real shady car is just driving by with their lights, like with a headlamp looking all around. And again, I'm on top of a mountain, so I don't know why they're coming up here at 3.30 in the morning. I was going to go set up my sky guider, but they got their headlamps flashing everywhere. And uh, it's really shady. I don't know what the heck they're doing. So I got my combat knife ready. And hopefully they're just setting up camp, but they stopped their car in the middle of the road instead of pulling off somewhere, so I don't know what they're up to. So I'm just gonna lay low, and if they come over here, I'm ready, but... We'll see what happens. Well, that's perfect. They just fired off a shot, so they have a gun. <laughs> I guess I should listen to the guys at the gym and get a gun, so... Maybe they're out here poaching. Now they've started a fire, even though there's a fire ban in effect because of how dry it's been. So, maybe they are just camping, but I think they're right next to the road still. So why would they park their car in the middle of the road, start a fire there, and fire off a shot? Something's definitely not right. So, we'll see what else happens. Well, after waiting around for a few hours, well, maybe an hour last night for them to do anything, uh, I ended up just passing out. And I think they were just some dumb teenagers out here trying to have a good time. Uh, I woke up to a few more gunshots, probably a, an hour after I passed out. Uh, 
So, needless to say, I didn't bother setting up the sky guider because they probably would have went over and started screwing with it, or at the very least, their headlamps would have ruined every photo, uh, the way they were shining them around, and that's right where I'd be aiming the sky guider in my lens. So, kind of a shame, you know, you drive all the way up here, and then you have the moose encounter, and then you've got the idiot encounter. So, um, I think today, maybe I'll just spend the whole day up here, move to another location, and then if it stays clear, I'll try again tonight, but we'll see what happens. I guess that's yeah, one of the downsides of wilderness astrophotography is that you really never know what's going to happen. Compared to backyard astrophotography, uh, pretty stable conditions all the time, besides the weather. Finally, some good news. Uh, one of my favorite spots here in the mountains. Uh, there's nobody here. So I think I'm gonna spend the day up here. There's a nice trail down through the forest, so I might hike down there. And uh, it should be a good day now that all the BS is hopefully behind me. <laughs>